A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob gave his sons this charge. Since I am about to be taken to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that lies in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah, facing on Mamre in the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite for a burial ground. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried, and so are Isaac and his wife Rebekah, and there too I buried Leah, the field and the cave in it that had been purchased from the Hittites. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful and thought, Suppose Joseph has been nursing a grudge against us and now plans to pay us back in full for all the wrong we did him. So they approached Joseph and said, Before your father died, he gave us these instructions. You shall say to Joseph, Jacob begs you to forgive the criminal wrongdoing of your brothers who treated you so cruelly. Please, therefore, forgive the crime that we, the servants of your father's God, committed. When they spoke these words to him, Joseph broke into tears. Then his brothers proceeded to fling themselves down before him and said, Let us be your slaves. Joseph replied to them, Have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for good, to achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore have no fear. I will provide for you and for your children. By thus speaking kindly to them, he reassured them. Joseph remained in Egypt together with his father's family. He lived a hundred and ten years. He saw Ephraim's children to the third generation, and the children of Manasseh's son, Machir, were also born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die. God will surely take care of you and lead you out of this land to the land that he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, putting the sons of Israel under oath, he continued, When God thus takes care of you, you must bring my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of a hundred and ten. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The response is, Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones, He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. 
Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your Father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Genesis 49, 29 to 32, and 50, 15 to 26a. We hear about the death of Jacob in Egypt, and he asks his sons to take his body back so that it might be buried along with Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebekah, as well as Leah, Jacob's first wife. In fact, in a passage that doesn't appear in today's reading, we hear about the procedure that's followed, and it's a typical procedure for mummification that's used in Egypt. When Jacob is dead, the brothers of Joseph are worried that he's only simulated forgiving them, that now that their father is dead, he's going to get even with them. And his response, don't worry, I'm not going to take revenge on you. This is all part of God's plan. Joseph lives to a ripe old age, and when he's about to die, he asks that he also be buried with the patriarchs in Machpelah. Remember that cave that Abraham bought to bury his wife, Sarah, the only piece of the promised land that Abraham took possession of. The gospel is from Matthew 10, 24 to 33. No disciple is greater than his master. So if Jesus suffered, we too will suffer. But don't be afraid of them because everything that's within you will be revealed. Don't worry about what they can do to your body. They can't touch your soul. If God protects every hair on your head, if God protects sparrows, which can be bought for almost nothing, how much more will he protect you? But remember that idea of protection isn't a guarantee that everything's gonna turn out well. Jesus doesn't make it all better, but he makes all the difference. He will always be with us, even if it means he has to be on the cross with us. And so what should we be afraid of? We should be afraid of not being authentic, of not being people of integrity. Those are the things that would destroy us from the inside. If we are faithful, then whatever happens to us, God can use as a moment of grace. And may God bless us.